In my travels, I had yet to meet a stranger who didn't recognize this iconic skyline or know the famous arches of the Golden Gate Bridge. The city of San Francisco is known as a cultural beacon for those that think independently, a place to express your true self, a collection of the most creative minds. I had come to the Bay Area to see four luxurious homes. Although I would not be in the city itself, I wondered if its influence would stretch beyond the Bay. After all, San Francisco came to be known as one of the most free-thinking cities in the world. Certainly, those ideals could transcend any income bracket. The San Francisco Bay Area has long attracted artists and innovators. Nowhere else is the desire to surround yourself with other free thinkers more evident. The four mansions I had come to tour all promised to be great examples of creativity. But which one truly captured the allure of this unique stretch of real estate? The next property set up a grand entrance. The long driveway was lined with olive trees and grapevines almost as if I were being greeted by the very surrounding themselves. With such a memorable welcome, the house had better deliver. OK, I'm going to ask you a difficult question now. Okay. Imagine that I've, n I've never been in this house, and you were going to describe it to me as you walk in. Okay. Uh, can you sort of describe the grandeur of the entrance and so on? Sure, so you... sure. Um, I would say when you walk up to the front porch and you see these grand cantera doors with big arches over the top of them, um, two stories. You're seeing two stories just of glass and iron, and you come in the front door, and you've got double staircases going up either side, a beautiful chandelier in the entryway, and beautiful artwork on the ceiling. And then you stand there for a minute, and you just have to take it all in. has a different story. All the suites in the house have a different name, and they're named after something that was important to us or was, you know, a feature in that particular suite. And uh, artwork, there's a ton of artwork in this house. Yeah, uh, the owner loved art, and so there's frescoes on the ceilings and um, pictures that she had seen in her travels. The ceiling details, um, she would take a picture when they were traveling, and a couple of these ceilings were inspired by Hearst Castle. Las Vegas, the Venetian, was another favorite place of hers, and so kind of as you walk through the house when you're here, you remember her different travels and what you know she liked and uh, what was important to them. Every corner of the house revealed more about the owner's personalities. Their willingness to be so open in their experiences made the home, despite its grand size, welcoming. This house, it just doesn't stop at a house. It's got moldings on top of carved uh, limestone pieces on top of, it's just layered with the most beautiful details. things yeah. Yeah, that, that you could possibly imagine. So um, there's a lot of glass tile and glass fish that are in the swimming pool spa area. So it was designed to where the water would flow over the wall of the uh, pool and you'd see the glass fish and it's just turned into a great area. I mean, you're indoors, but there are so many grand windows and opening doors, <laughs> a huge fireplace. Um, and then you see the vineyard and the willow trees in the background and you almost forget that you're indoors. You keep talking about the garage and the car collection. I'm dying to see them. Oh, you have so to. So is that, that, is that where we're going next? That's where we're going to go next. Great, let's do that. I couldn't help myself. The self-proclaimed car enthusiast inside me was begging to see the garage. Perhaps the vehicles housed inside would reveal even more about the owner. 
This garage here kind of was inspired by an old railroad building, I think in Minnesota. And so the old trusses and all the metal straps and everything kind of inspired the owner that that's what he wanted the inside of the building to look like. Uh, even though these are garages, they're pieces of art. There's obviously this wonderful car collection here and so they had to be special on the inside. How many garages like this are around the house? I believe there's three. There's three. Four. There's three garages. This one's about 8,700 square feet. Uh, the next garage is 12,000 square feet. They just kept getting bigger because <laughs> he kept getting more cars. And then the final garage is 24,000 square feet. And there are cars in all of them. I think there's approximately 65 cars in the garages and then uh, they have another property out of the state and about 60 of the cars are on that property as well. You couldn't argue that the collection wasn't impressive. And just as interesting was the fully functioning diner located within the garage itself. Walking through the other garage, I noticed the diner. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, the diner is great. Uh, the diner was built kind of to memorialize where the owner took his lovely girlfriend before they were married on dates <laughs> and uh, proposed. And so they decided to build the diner in the garage for entertaining. And it's called Nana's Diner. And so Nana is the owner, that's what her grandchildren call her. And so it has everything there, it's fully functioning and working. We've had some great get togethers and, and events there in the diner and everybody gets behind the counter and there's a milkshake machine. That's and nostalgia. Yeah, there. <laughs> there's a lot of nostalgia there. And all of the names of the different locations as you're walking through the garage are different names of their grandchildren and family members. So you, you'll have a bunch of different, you know, there's a bait and tackle and it's after one of their grandsons. And I there's see. a Rexall drugstore after, to, yes. Yeah. So um, everything in the home, in the garage is very personalized to their family. Here was a house owned by two wealthy people, yet their focus was on making it a tribute and welcoming place for their family and guests. I had visited enough luxury homes to know few ever feel so inviting. The original idea was more of a Tuscan estate that uh, is very warm and welcoming and you just feel like there's nobody that could come here that would ever feel like they couldn't sit down and curl up and put their feet on the couch and enjoy themselves. I vouch for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. Just as the house before, this property was another example of the owner's self-expression. The rows of grape wine certainly paid a tribute to the surrounding area as well. 